Hello, everyone. We're back with episode, I want to say, 27 with Does This Movie Deserve a Sequel? Uh, I'm back with Emily DeSisio. Hey, quarantine co-host. I yep. have thoughts about this one. <laughs> We're going to basically take the next half an hour to show why Emily is wrong and why her opinion's invalid. But <laughs> <laughs> Or that I'm completely right. You're welcome, world. Uh, so we're talking about Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's a like detective story set in L.A. I personally love it. You can probably tell I'm the one who selected this. But uh, to give viewers and listeners a rundown of what we're going to talk about, we'll start with personal connection, best scene, worst scene, best line, casting decisions, nitpicks, and hot takes. As always, I'll start with Emily. Do you have any personal connections with this movie? Well, like most of the movies you suggest, my personal connection is you. Um I can say that I I guess I'm happy I saw it, but I'm also unhappy that I didn't like it that much. And I felt like it was long. But that's okay. What's your personal connection to this movie? That's that's disappointing. I hate to hear that because I have a lot of personal connections to this movie. I'll talk more about the first one later on, but Keen Peel did a sketch about it. It caught Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer at, like, the perfect time. And I, I don't know if this movie could be made outside of 2005, but I like both those actors a lot. I think they're both very talented, and uh, I enjoy watching them. But more so than that, Detective Stories in L.A., I just think you can't really go wrong. There's great, it's such a great setting for that to happen, and that's what this uh, movie's basically centered around. And it's written by written and directed by Shane Black, and he's a, I'm a big fan of his. He also did The Other Guys, which is a similar... Or The Nice Guys, not The Other Guys. I always get that mixed up. But the one with Russell Crowe and uh, Ryan Gosling recently. He's just a really good scriptwriter, and he has a good job. He does a good job of mixing mystery, action, and like comedy all within one kind of story. And the mystery is always great, but he doesn't go so far to the extent where you don't care about the characters or the setup or anything else. So I, I really enjoy his scripts. And he also did Lethal Weapon, so he's just like a national treasure. I didn't know he didn't leave the weapon. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Fun fact it, that people can use at trivia. Yet another yes. fact that you've given that people can use at trivia. If you like leave the weapon, you'll probably like this movie too. Uh, incorrect, but keep going. <laughs> the, the last thing I'll say about it is I do like how it also pokes fun at detective tropes. They have narration that Robert Downey Jr. does. And they also poke fun at how movies are made and how certain scenes are very obviously just constructed to like build a story or a plot or a character that would never happen in real life. And just poking fun at that as someone who wants to write, it's just really funny to see like a really great writer do it in real time. So I enjoy that too. Okay. Cool. We'll move on <laughs> to best scene. Did you like any scene in this movie? Um... I actually really did like the beginning when he went back into how he got to LA. I enjoyed, that was actually my favorite scene when he went back and he was uh, stealing from the store and then running from police and then went in and gave the audition. I thought that was a really great scene. And I was like, okay, I'm getting this. This is off to a really strong start. Unfortunately, that was the pinnacle of the movie and it all went downhill from there. But I really enjoyed that scene, um, and it, it caught my attention because it was just a different way of doing things and how I've seen movies done. You like the, the method acting? <laughs> I really did. I thought that was really great, and I like how everybody reacted. And even when the police came in and was like, you know, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. Because he thinks she's a young actor trying to make his break, and <laughs> he just robbed a store and got shot. Yeah. Exactly. What was your favorite scene? So there are a lot. I enjoy a lot of this movie. Pretty much anything with Harry and Harmony, I really like. But uh, I'll I'll pick the first scene where so Harmony's passed out at this party and this creep is going up there and the implication is like something bad's probably gonna happen. So Robert Downey Jr. steps in and he gives this great bluff about how he's gonna whip this guy's ass so he doesn't stop. And you've seen this in so many movies. And the first time I saw it, I believed him. So I was like, oh, Robert Downey Jr. is going to beat the shit out of this guy. But then they do a really great edit. It's a cut just to Robert Downey Jr. getting his ass kicked outside. So it's really funny that he just had, like, bluff to say, hey, if you do anything bad, like, I'll, I'll beat your ass. I'm a black belt. And he just did – I don't forget the line, but he had a really witty comeback. And just to find out that he actually has no idea how to fight and gets his ass beat is really funny. I did really like this. He said, do not think. Get the fuck out right now. And then – he gets his ass whooped and like tries to be the knight in shining armor 
I did like that scene and my dad actually laughed out loud during that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. He just pulls it off so well. And just the cut from him being all tough to just like getting kicked on the grass is great. Yeah. And it was, it was really smart editing too. I love that. Yeah. They did a fun, fun job there. The other ones like Harry and Har- Harmony uh, reconnecting at the bar. I thought it was a pretty good twist that Harmony was actually the girl that he grew up with and he just didn't recognize her, but she recognized him because the whole time I'm like, I don't believe that they would like hook up here. And then once that revelation happened, like, Oh, it actually makes more sense. But mm-hmm. I thought that was a good scene. Uh, Harry and Perry fighting on the balcony. <laughs> and like, it just gets revealed that Perry just like fucked him over the entire time. I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And uh, uh, the last one, when they, they get stuck up by two, uh like thugs outside of a hospital and uh perry just takes his gun and then they kind of hold him hostage and ask him questions and uh right robert downey jr does the russian roulette trick except he accidentally just shoots him in the head in the, in the first shot so uh that cliches in so many movies where they do russian roulette and you pull it two or three times and nothing happens so it's just funny to see someone who has no idea about guns or russian roulette or anything give it a try and just immediately kill somebody that was that was another laugh out loud funny scene like those were definitely funny yeah they have a lot that just goes against your expectations or what you've seen happen a million times which i kind of enjoy and then also like uh another one of those scenes was when he woke up next to harmony's friend at the very (laughs) beginning you're just like what yeah because you expect to see harmony in the bed and then you're like you see the annoying friend and you're like oh my god also another part i did laugh out loud yeah, this is almost as much of a, it probably is more of a comedy than a mystery, but they're, it's kind of half and half. It's does this not have a, very a massive sp- cult following, by the way? I think it does. It wasn't popular when it came out, but once Shane Black started getting bigger, I think it developed into that, especially after Robert Downey Jr.'s rise, which okay. we'll talk about more later. All right, okay. you probably have a lot for this. Do you have a worse scene? Well, I would like to start the intro, the James Bondy thing. I hate it. I hated it. It was too long. I was just like, after a couple minutes of it, I wanted it to be over. So, I, but I don't like any of those intros. Um, even when we watched Catch Me If You Can, I thought that was a little too long. I was about to say, don't you love Catch Me If You Can? It's basically the same thing, but I guess you didn't I like did. that one. I didn't. I'm consistent, at least. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, least favorite scenes? Well, okay, there were, there were two things I really hated. I said, I hate when Robert Downey Jr. said... She fucked every other guy in high school. Um, it's just like, it, it puts women to have this worth about who they fucked and they're so somehow like slutty if they have sex with a lot of people. So I didn't like that light that she cast or that he casted on her um, as a woman. I know that comes back later on, but I just thought, or could have been something else, like, you know, I, I don't know what, but I didn't like the cast, the light that it was cast. I also had so much trouble in general following this movie. Was that the point? Because, like, towards the end, I was like, what the fuck? I found myself getting very frustrated. Did you find yourself frustrated at all? I mean, I've seen it before, so I didn't. But the first time, I definitely had to read the Wikipedia afterwards. Be like, did I get this right? <laughs> it's very complicated. And it's funny because it kind of starts off very slow. But after around the 30-minute mark, it just one after another after another. So many revelations, and they throw it at you, and they don't really take the time to explain it. So you really need to be on your, your P's and Q's, I guess, when you're watching it. it. It is a very complicated movie. I agree. And then, so, okay, then why, I also thought at the end, the exposition between Perry and Robert Downey Jr. about their fathers at the end, like, what was the point of that? Like, I understand Harmony's dad was a friggin' monster, but I didn't understand what the point at the end of the movie was about talking about their father issues, their daddy issues. Uh, So what they were trying to say is, uh, Harmony's sister committed suicide or you think she committed suicide so one of the big revelations or points they were trying to figure out was did, I forget his name, Harlan did he actually mm-hmm. murder her sister and that's what they thought happened because she was prying into everything but she actually did commit suicide because she saw Harlan with who he thought, who she thought was his legitimate daughter having like sex, like incest but it was actually uh, a fake 
actress daughter that he hired. And so when she saw that, she thought it was another abusive father who she thought was her real life father. And that just drove her, drove her over the edge. So she ended up like killing herself. But that was why they were going into that situation. Okay. All right. Well, then, and then the last thing I really didn't like. Okay. So I understand, like, so he's gay, Perry, but like, and I know it was 2005, but him constantly, I think, the self deprecating and like referring to him self as a fag and then also like the little things there are little like little things of homophobia that I think perpetuated homophobic behaviors throughout the movie like when he's talking Robert Downey Jr. is talking about the girl that got away and then Perry mentions the guy that got away and Robert Downey Jr. just gives like a grossed out face that bothered me because it's like, it's not gross. It's just his story when, yeah, his crush Bobby Mills. And then when they were at the party and then there were kind of the two like gay dancers doing like a Cirque du Soleil thing, he gave another ugh face, which was like, come on, dude. Like, it's not, you're not going to catch it. You can't catch it. Um, and that bothered me. So I would have to say those, I, I don't, I think that's a nitpick. I think that's something that just inherently bothered me. Yeah, they definitely have to massage part of uh, Gay Perry's character if they were going to make this movie yeah. today. First, they probably wouldn't call him Gay Perry, which is the most yeah. obvious thing, I think. But uh, yeah, Robert Downey Jr. definitely has a few like homophobic moments. And some of it, I think they're trying to play off that right before he said Bobby Mills, he just said he wasn't gay. So then it kind of, I think it caught him by surprise where he's like, oh no, he actually is gay. But I don't okay. think he needed to make that <laughs> the face. That was a little, he could have just been like surprised or something. Right. Yeah. So yeah, those were, those were my main things against the movie. What about you? So I didn't really hate any scenes in this movie. The ones, the one I picked is the dog eating Robert <laughs> Downey Jr.'s severed finger just because it's really gross. And he like eats the whole thing. So I didn't really want to see that. <laughs> I, I didn't enjoy that part. Yeah. Well, I, we will come back to that scene with nitpicks. Yeah. I won't say it now, but we'll come back. Okay. The other ones, uh, I don't think the girl with pink hair can act at all. So even though you don't even see her, you're just hearing her talk to this assassin who ends up killing her, her line delivery is just really bad. So I, I didn't like that scene. I think they should have gotten a better actress to play her. I don't I don't know what the actress's name is. And then the ball shock scene is just painful. I don't even like watching that. It's kind of like a scene of Royale. Anything yeah. with that, I'd rather just not be in the movie. Yeah, that, like, I could see my dad wincing too. So I, yeah. I don't feel you, actually. I can't say that, but... <laughs> Yeah. You get it, yeah. Yeah. That, that's all I had for worst scene. So okay. we can go. Uh, do you have any line, best line that you like in this? I have a few lines that I really like. Um, okay, Perry saying, sorry, I got a little nonplussed there. I liked the use of the word, nonplussed. <laughs> um, okay, and then when Perry, Perry delivered great lines, Val Kilmer, um, he yeah. said, go, sleep badly. If you have questions, hesitate to call. <laughs> Love that. But I think my favorite line was with Robert Downey Jr. Doesn't that suck? I just hit you with the gun for no reason. When he when he hit the guy, I thought that was the delivery. His both Val Kilmer, you're right. I thought the acting was exceptional in this movie. Um, but Val Kilmer and Robert Downey Jr.'s line delivery delivery was great. I agree with that. They have great chemistry and I wish they worked together again because I think they have, they just have very funny lines and they play off each other really well. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's going to be bad language coming up, but I have a few that I really liked. The first one, <laughs> uh, it's gay, gay Perry. <laughs> and he says, uh, he called her, well, a bad word. And he just pauses for a second and you don't think he's going to say it. He goes, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so just the fact that he sets it up and you think they're just going to move on, but he actually says the word just makes it so much funnier. So, and the uh, delivery was great. Yeah. Yeah. So Val Kilmer is really good in this movie. I love his sass. I know you probably don't like it as much, but he's just like very sassy. Another example is when they're talking about uh, bad versus badly. And he's like, badly is an adverb. Who taught you grammar? Uh, shoe, vanish. <laughs> he's like throws him out of the car. I thought that was really funny. Yes. I did. See, I did like Val Kilmer's sass. I loved it. I just think he didn't have to be hate himself. Or, like, hate the gay part of it. I think he could have really just went with it more. Kind of like how he did at the end. 
Yeah. Yeah, you should just ran with it. Yeah. Better. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. has a speech about L.A. women <laughs> at a Christmas party that's very derogatory, but also really funny. And I won't read the entire thing, but he pretty much just gets the entire party to hate him within 30 seconds. But there's like a nugget of truth to what he says. <laughs> so, sorry, go back and rewatch that scene. It's not completely uh, fabricated. Uh, the two that I picked, they're kind of in tandem because they're one right after another. It's uh, when Robert Downey Jr. kicks uh, Harmony out of his hotel room. You don't really know why because she's about to reveal a secret. And he's like, you slept with Jim Chetney. <laughs> it's because she slept with his childhood friend. And she said she slept with everyone except his best friend because she didn't want to make him feel bad. But then she actually admits that he did. And he's just like, why? He goes, he looks sad. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. He's like, he, he looks sad. <laughs> I thought this actress, I'm totally brain farting on her name, uh, who played Harmony. She was uh, great. Michelle Monahan. Yeah, she's great. She was really good in this. Her delivery, too. She, like, could keep the flow right back with Robert Downey Jr., which I don't think is an easy task. No, I looked behind the scenes, and apparently a lot of what they were doing was just ad-libbing. And the fact that she kept up with him in that is pretty impressive because he's great at that. And But she put, pulled it off and like held her own. Mm-hmm. So that was my favorite one, just that you slept with Jim Chad and he looks sad. <laughs> so I, I thought that was great. Uh, all right, casting decisions. Let's go with yours first. Okay. I only had a few. There's only a few characters in this that really get a lot of screen time. So I'm going to go with the, the main cast. I'm really proud of my first one. So Robert Downey Jr. Keep in mind, this is 2005. I think this would have been a perfect Nick Cage role. Ooh, oh yeah, he would have. You can, you. He has, I think, a sense of humor too to pull it off. He does, and I can see him being a makeshift detective, but not a real one. He's funny. He could uh, pull off the quote-unquote action sequences, and this is before his career was just completely tanked. But it was on the downward spiral, which I think could have helped here because this is Robert Downey Jr.'s vehicle to actually get back into Hollywood. So mm-hmm. I, I think. He could have done that as well. Uh, Val Kilmer, I think Hugh Grant would have been really good as Gay Perry. Ooh. He, if you've seen, what was that movie called that came out recently? Uh, the Gentleman. He plays a similar role. He, he's gay in that as well, but he's just very charismatic and funny and kind of suave that I think he'd be a good uh, Gay Perry. <laughs> I like that. I don't disagree with you on either so far. There you go. This one was tougher. Michelle Monahan. I wish she was in more movies. So she was in Gone Baby Gone with uh, Casey Affleck, and it was very much a different type of character than this. And she was also in True Detective, and mm-hmm. she was uh, Woody Harrelson's wife, and she was really good in the first season of that. So I think she's a great actress, and I don't know why her career wasn't bigger. It was big, but I think she was she's a leading actress, and I don't know why she was on more stuff. So the replacement I have, I do not think as highly of, but in this role, uh, I think Alicia, Sil- Alicia Silverstone or Alicia Silverstone. Oh, yeah, she would actually be really good because I think, too, she can deliver the quick, witty lines, and I'm thinking of Clueless, but she's also super hot. Yes, it's basically the Clueless character 10 years later if she tried to become an actress but didn't make it, and she's just kind of hanging around. I would actually really like to see this movie remade with your cast. There you go. So it's going well. Uh, I only had a few other ones. The pink-haired lady... I don't know the real actress, but it was like Amanda Bynes. <laughs> She's insane. I <laughs> think she, she could have done that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I like that. She'd be into that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the other two, Harlan Dexter, so the bald villain, just Ed Harris, always pulls off evil, bald type power players. So I <laughs> cast him there. Uh, the last two, what's his name? Frying Pan. So one of the uh, assassins, a white one. He was also in Ray Donovan. I said John Cena. He's need like a big guy. This would have been early in his career where I've been like afraid of him, but he's also pretty funny, so he can pull off the the good cop, bad cop stuff. That's a really good idea. I'm I'm. This is probably one of my favorite castings that you've done. Oh, thank you. I only had one more. It's mustard. So the other uh, the black uh, henchman <laughs> murderer. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but. Chiwetel Ejiofor. <laughs> I have no yeah. idea how to pronounce his name. But he's also, he was in uh, Inside Man, and he has a very great screen presence, and I would be afraid of him, but not really know why, because he doesn't seem that menacing, but he's just got an undertone about him, where like, even though he's joking around, and he's making me feel a little uncomfortable, I know he will kill me <laughs> if I like mess up. So I, uh, I thought he would be good in that role. Okay. Well, yeah. I like yours. 
per usual, I recast the movie with all women. Uh, just to say it's consistent and because all movies would be better just with all women. Um, okay. Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Harry Lockhart, would be played by Constance Wu. She was the lead in Crazy Rich Asians, and she's also the mom on Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, I think her delivery is super dry and really witty, and I think she could kill it. I thought Gay Perry could be Halle Berry. Halle Berry, hmm. I think it would be That's... interesting. I'd like to see her try. I think she's too good looking to be Gay Perry. I know, but like, you know, because Val Kilmer is super pretty boy. So I'm like, who's like a pretty woman who could kind of be like, I don't, because he's so, he's so good looking. And I kept thinking of Iceman. Like he was a little chunky. He's good looking in this movie though. Yeah, he's pretty, he's, he had, it's like the last good year he had. <laughs> yeah, he had like an essence of still Iceman, but like definitely a little chunkier, a lot chunkier. <laughs> Um, and then my final one is Harmony. I think a young Sandra Bullock. Ooh, I like that. She'd be great. I think she'd do a really good job. And she'd be quick-witted funny. The speed era Sandra Bullock. Right. Who everybody yeah. loved. She's great. Yeah, I really like Constance Wu and Sandra Bullock in those roles. I think that would, that would be good. Okay. Sweet. All right, we're on to nitpicks. Are there any nitpicks <laughs> you have with this movie? Absolutely. And we can go back and forth on these. But so one of mine is his finger was removed. He would be an excruciating pain, like excruciating. And the fact, and even though he was on painkillers, still, that stuff would wear off. And that's like, I can't imagine the pain because it was excruciating. So that, he, no. Do you want to go back and forth, or is that your only one? No, I have more, but I want to go back and forth. Okay. I had one similar to that. Can you actually get your finger cut off in a doorway? Is that even possible? Did she slam it that hard? I don't think it would sever your finger. I think it would just hurt really badly. Yeah. I don't know, but my God, I just remember, like, I was like, holy shysters, like, when that moment happened. I hated that. All right, I'll go. I'll give another one. We already okay. talked about this. Uh, just the name Gay Perry is a little much. I think they could have mentioned it one time. Like, oh, some people call him Gay Perry and then just call him Perry the rest of the time. But it was just Agreed. very much force fed. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I can't read my writing. That's what I'm trying to. Do you think the book would have really saved him with the gun? I thought that came at the very end, like how that came full circle with the novels. Do you think a book, I mean, it did go through, but it was a thin book. I don't know. Yeah, I think he would have survived it. It just would have hurt really badly. It wouldn't have stopped the bullet completely. Like, it didn't. I also love those books, by the way, the fake John Gisherman or whatever. Those are the kind of trashy old L.A. novels I like reading, but they're so fake. That's kind of funny. They built the plot around those books. Yeah, I, I did. I like there are a lot of aspects of this movie I really did like, but I just had a lot of frustrations with not being able to follow it. Okay, so another nitpick I have is when he the coffin goes out of the car, he falls and then holds onto the hand and he's dangling over the freeway. I'm pretty sure someone's the, the dead body's arm would have been like pulled out of socket. <laughs> It he could was, have been, yeah. He was he was flailing, and he is a like you know what one sixty, and that was like a I don't know I feel like that arm would have been gone. There's a lot about the highway scene that you could <laughs> nitpick. It's very much an unbelievable sequence of events. Uh, I was gonna say like the method acting at the beginning. There's no way the cop or they would have let him in in the first place, and then I don't know. It just seemed that it was a little contrived, but it's also kind of funny, and I don't really care that much because the whole movie's kind of like that but they uh i wouldn't believe one that he's a good actor two that they would let him in three that the cops would just let him keep acting after someone got shot right outside and i felt the lack of security cameras throughout this because this is 2005 there were there was a modicum of security not like we have today but like even in the health clinic throughout the hotel in the lobby, like, you know, people going through the, the lobbies and that, I was like, 
just go to security footage. Yeah, and how did they get the body into his room, the Veronica's body into the shower? I never thought about that either, but yeah. Yeah, so there were just some inconsistencies that made me be like, but wait, how am I going to now get this answer and I didn't? Yep. Uh, I had a few quick ones. There are so many you could write down because the movie's not really supposed to be taken that seriously. <laughs> right. So if you wanted to take it, there's many you could do, but there are a few big ones. One, the food truck guy immediately murdering the assassin from the back. I was like, first of all, this is California. Do you, does anyone carry guns there? And second of all, would you be that quick to just kill someone? Right. It was I mean, funny, but I was just like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> this guy's packing and he's ready to go. Yeah. Oh, another nitpick I had was like, I thought Dabney, the agent, was, I thought he at the beginning, I'm like, oh, he's the killer. He's involved in some way. Um, mm. but he wasn't and I just I don't know I thought I was going to see more of him because I felt like they laid all these clues and then nothing happened yeah I, I do love how they call out when uh Perry tells Harry just about oh he had like a big fight with his daughter and they have a squabble over the inheritance blah blah and they go over and over and then they cut to the narration Robert Downey Jr. is like oh I wonder why we put that in there do you think it's going to come back like oh hey when they do that in movies Especially in uh, A Hunt for Red October when they just pan on the chef for five seconds. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen there. And I just I think it's funny that they call it out in their own movie that, yeah, this is clearly thrown in to give the audience members just details about what's to come. I agree. I actually really like that. I like when you reference other movies in a current movie. But, yeah, okay. Those are all my nitpicks, but what else? Uh, I don't think Robert Downey Jr. or Harry would pass out in the taxi when his uh, love of his life's going to try to stop the be- one of his best friends from getting murdered in the park. I think he'd have enough adrenaline to stay awake. Agreed. But I agree. That's the whole agree. reason. That kind of annoyed me that I think the only reason he got his finger cut off is because they needed him to pass out in the back of the cab to have the whole story work. But it's just too many leaps. <laughs> I don't know. I think they could have had a better writing job to figure out how he ends up in the taxi with uh, this, this killer. Mm-hmm. So as one uh, harmony disarming and knocking out Mr. Mustard, he does it, she does it really easily and he's supposed to be a professional assassin. So that was a little bit. I did like that though. I'm like, Oh my God, harmony kicking ass. I'm like, okay. I, I, cause I expected her to just be weak with all of these stereotypical things in this movie, which I didn't like, but that did, pleasantly surprised me okay uh perry living after the gunshot wound that's another thing they made fun of like oh he made it oh of course <laughs> i thought that was really funny that they point fun at it and then bring back everyone who got killed earlier in the story like oh let's just bring them all back mm-hmm. because uh they don't want they're just making fun of how studios will test different endings and if one ending upsets audience members too much they'll revoke it so star wars had seven or eight endings for the last movie and it would have been a bummer if Perry died. So they were saying we just brought him back because we want people to be happy. And their excuse was that it really happened. But obviously, it's not a true story. So they were calling out that it was bullshit. But it also annoyed me because he clearly would have died. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, the last one was just the highway shootout, all of it. <laughs> so I'll go into that. Yeah. The fact that he kills everyone. Yeah, yeah I was going to be like him exactly having a perfect shot. Right. The whole I do love the line. Yeah, that Harlan says when he when he shoots him, like point not point blank from like across the highway, a uh, split second. He goes, "Fucking magic, man!" I love that line. <laughs> that was good. <great. laughs> because he was a he was a kid magician, so he kind of came full circle. Sweet. Any hot takes? The whole and you kind of mentioned this. The whole broken finger thing, unnecessary, completely bad writing. Write better. Yeah, it was kind of funny because it helped him stay with Harmony, but they could have come up with a dozen different ways that made more sense than him losing a finger. Yeah, just it took, even though you had to give kind of a willing suspension of disbelief with this movie and take it, you know, for what it is, that was a thing that kept really getting me out of it and getting me very annoyed. So my hot take is take the whole finger thing out. I agree. It was it was unnecessary. All right, this is a scorching hot take. 
I wish Robert Downey Jr. never played Iron Man and stuck to non-superhero movies because he's so good in this. And it's basically Tony Stark just without the suit. But I wanted to see what else he could have done. I think he's such a talented actor and he kind of got shoehorned into playing the same character for 10 movies. And I wish his career just spanned out more because he had a huge drug problem and he finally got back. And then he ended up just playing Tony Stark the rest of his career. Well, that's a thing, though. I thought Robert Downey Jr. or think Robert Downey Jr. can make great chemistry and make other actors look really great. And so they kept Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark because it brought up all the other people's acting. Because how can you yeah. not feed off of him? So, you know what, I, re- I actually really do like that hot take. Or, because he is Tony Stark and he made the Iron Man who he is. But I agree. I, I wish he I was like the that. first Iron Man and not the sequels. I love the first Iron Man. Maybe just stop after that. Yeah. That's actually, I, I like that. I'm going with that. Tony Stark first Iron Man is Robert Downey Jr. and then stop. But that's a great point you had. He, he's like the Energizer Bunny. I can't remember movies that he's in where the supporting cast sucked. Right. I think he ups everybody's game by being around that. Yeah. So I wish I wish I got more of that and I didn't and I'm upset. <laughs> the yeah. Marvel Universe ruins everything. And now he's just uh, so rich, like he doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, he could just keep playing Tony Stark, even though I think I think he might have died. I don't know. I stopped watching him, but Me too. there there's too many, and he's so talented. I, I wish he branched out more. Uh, I wish the corny Johnny G novels were real, <laughs> the ones that they made up for this movie. I'm like, ooh, I would like these. <laughs> and the, I forget the, some of the titles they had, but they're so corny and ridiculous, but also exactly what was written in that that era. I actually thought that that you would really like those. I probably would read one and be like, I can't stand this. <laughs> you could tell Shane Black likes those novels too, because a lot of his movies are patterned in that type of fashion. So it, it was good. It was great. <laughs> yeah. This one was already covered by Key and Peele, but this movie only works in 2005. And it's because you need Val and Robert Downey Jr. in it. But if you do this movie in 2000, Robert Downey Jr. is on the bender and no one's going to be able to hire him. And you won't be able to perform and Val Kilmer would be too famous to play Perry. If you did in 2010, Val Kilmer has a bunch of health problems. He probably can't do it. He'll probably be sick and not as great of an actor, and Robert Downey Jr. is too famous, and he's Iron Man. So this is the only time this movie could have ever been made. That was – that. I really like that point. I actually told that before we watched the movie to my dad, and he's like, that's an excellent uh, point. Anyone who hasn't seen the, that Key, Key and Peele sketch, just try to search for it. Like Key and Peele, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang or something. They do a great job of – you can tell they're fans in the movie and that they bring up this point too, but it's so true that there is a very limited window for this movie to happen and they, they hit it, which is great. Uh, last one. This is a smaller one. Val Kilmer ducking to dodge and throwing beer glass <laughs> in the – uh, at the LA party is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. I rewound that probably three or four times. It's just so perfect. That was a good scene. Yeah. So this is for context. It's right after Robert Downey Jr. basically calls all LA women like whores or just like troubled children basically. And uh, then every uh, Harmony disagrees with them. Ask every, all the women in the bar, like, do you all hate Harry? And they all say yes. And then uh, uh, Perry comes, and that's Val Kilmer from the back, and he goes, oh, they're obedient little bitches, too. And then someone just goes, fuck you, and you hear a, a bottle get thrown, but he just ducks. And this, the timing of the duck to dodge it, he just knew it was coming. He didn't even turn to see anyone throw stuff at him. So the fact that he knew it was coming, anticipated it, and dodged it, it was just really funny to watch. I just yeah. love that scene. It was yeah. good. It was good. Yeah. It's, it's a good just comedic relief. If you ever had a bad day, I just like, watched gay Perry insult women <laughs> to dodge the, the repercussions. So I liked it. That was the last one I had. That's all I got. Are we, what are we doing? Are we doing book smart? Are you ever going to watch book smart? <laughs> are we doing yes. something else? The fair audience can be sure that we will be doing book smart for our next pod. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening in and we'll see you all soon. Alrighty.